Hi everyone, I'm designing a CD for a friend of mine, um, he only wants simple stuff doing so um, he is a friend so I give him what's known as mates rates, so doing things on the cheap. Um, so nothing like too uh, extravagant here but um, what I'll do first is um, I'll show you the Wow, which one's this? Yeah, I'll show you the proofs from. Um... What did I put there? The proofs from the previous CD design. So this is uh, the last one, um, a design for him. Really simple stuff. So it's a cardboard um, CD design. There's a little white box here where you can um, put um, um, certain codes, that kind of thing. Uh, these are, you know, obviously the. Uh, the title tracks um, and the other information. So here's a couple of proofs, just uh, both slightly differently. It's like you know, it's simple stuff. It's like he wanted this photograph on the CD, so not much designing to do there, except for me to put some um, some text on. So if you want to have a look, um, where did I put the actual? Uh, there we go. So cardboard wallet. Do -do -do. It's now uh, past one o'clock in the morning here in the UK. It's a really warm day. Right then. That's just showing um, a mismatch of the profiles, nothing serious at this stage. So, anyway, so what I always do is um, I design it in Photoshop and then. Um, Bring it into Illustrator, so this you know shows the uh, the dimensions, that kind of thing, of the CD, the front and back, and um, you know that's the way that uh, it will be cut, sort of thing. So nothing too complicated, but um, in this CD uh, design, it wants just the front doing just for digital use. Although I do suspect you know he may want something uh, designing uh, as a CD sleeve in the future, so. For this particular project, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm just going to show you from start to finish me looking at the project from afresh. So I've just put a title here from new. Um, so rather than me thinking about it and figuring out what I'm going to do and then doing some kind of highly polished video, I'm going to show you, you know, as me as a designer, how how I will tackle a project from start to finish. And so all I've done so far, I've just read his emails, and I've um, extracted. There's two parts. I'll keep you know some information personal. Um, so in the notes file here, I've just copied and pasted the two main things he wants me to do. You know, I've edited out. You know, deleted anything that's uh, that's personal. So this was the first thing he sent was simply photo in the middle, a background, maybe a light one. And at the top of the title, indoor fireworks demos. And at the bottom, Scott Wainwright, maybe using an old typewriter font. And then after another email, they sent me this one, um, an update, which is uh, thinking maybe of a cardboard colour background, like a file from a filing cabinet sort of thing, you know? Top secret documents, maybe. Let me know thoughts. So, not much to go on here at all. It's like, sounds to me like, you know, he doesn't have <laughs> much of an idea of what he wants, really, except for something just really simple. So, uh, the files that he sent, he sent this um, this photograph of him to use for the front, and um, this is what he sent me. So, title, so that's, uh, that's Scott there, the photograph he wants me to use. Indoor fireworks, in brackets, demos, Scott Wainwright. So, he wants something very simple. So, you know... Nothing too hard here, except for if it throws a bit of a curveball here. And uh, I'm just looking now then. What, what was this saying? Something to, to do with what? Thinking maybe a cardboard colour background. So, not white. Like a file from a filing cabinet sort of thing. You know, top secret documents. I think he's referring to something like, you know, you can see in a filing cabinet on a film, and they're flipping through and it says top secret on top. So, first steps then. I need an image. I've just um, set these two up after just before the video, just to make sure I'm logged in 
And I'm not actually logged in on Pexels, but um, apparently just, I just uh, did a test download on the first photograph that I saw just to see if it downloads. I don't need to be signed in for that. So anyway, if you've never been to Pexels before, you can use these uh, photographs royalty free. So even on a CD cover design, at least for the majority of them, I believe. So let me put first top secret file. Do you mean what a crappy search engine? <laughs> top result picture of mountains. Do you mean? No wonder the pictures are for free. Let me see. Da, da, da. Right, I'm getting more and more irrelevant as I go down. Let's see, top secret. Top secret box. Uh, no. Okay. File. So it's just me good on my lips. Sometimes forget them recording at the same time. So she's got a file. Don't really see how that can be used on a CD design cover. Uh, um, nope. Ooh, what's that? Oh yeah, this is how they make the money. They they put in a dope stock photographs right at the bottom to try and uh, tempt you into um, using a dope stock. I mean, this would be something that I'll be looking for actually. You know, something with top secret on, maybe. By the way, if you're getting into the design, the last service I would ever use is Adobe Stock because they're so expensive. There's really no need. Unless, you know, you're working for clients who have a lot of money and you're charging a lot of money and then whatever file you download, you're charging to the client. Then I would stay, if you're doing smaller projects, I would stay away from Adobe Stock. Um, but a really good one, this is my, my go to place. I have a, um, a pro subscription with FreePick. Which means that I can use any of the images, in, and they've got a lot of images and vectors as well, uh, even in commercial projects without attributing, um, you know, copyright information. Um, you know, so if if you use a free, you can use this for free without paying anything. But if you use the image, you need to attribute the author of the image in, in a text underneath or something like that, and uh, a bit pointless for uh, commercial use. But, it can, but if you pay like a fee, it's not, it's not too much money for a yearly fee. Um, I don't need to attribute, but I, anything I use um, it has to be used as a uh, secondary element, which means it can't be used as is on that. So I couldn't do a CD cover with these bang on the front and leave it as is. Um, same with this, I couldn't just like put that as a Christmas you know, song CD cover. That kind of thing. I mean, the rules is a bit ambiguous because uh, there are some things that you could only use on their, on their own, like templates. I mean, that that's meant to be the main focal image, so it's a bit weird the rules. But uh, I think generally, uh, it's like whatever I use, I need to change, and it needs to be added to something else, basically. So let's see what I can do. Right. Then. So I'm going to search for. I'll just put top secret first and see what it brings up. Right. Eleven minutes past one. I need to go to bed. Let me see. All right. Um. Right then. Let's uh. Let's look at this one. Got no files though. Let's see. Time for this one. Top secret. So top secret file. I mean, so these are like you know the, the files that he's talking about, but um, oh, the top secret there. Is that something I can do with that? Let's have a look. So on this one, for example, I'm thinking about, you know, uh, this one that says top secret. Um, 
I may be putting that my file. So this has actually got files. Uh, what was a piece of cardboard? How is it? I'm trying to think in my mind on this. Uh, I was sort of bringing up one o'clock in the morning. So hey, Scott, what's the deal with this? <laughs> what's going on? So it wants a white background or card background, but somehow saying top secret as though it's a file. So maybe have a file, you know, a little tab there, and top secret on. Do we have just a picture of a file? So oh, wait a minute. I want to go on to the main one. File, baby. There we go. My photographs. Right. Ooh, I'll get some. Mm. It's like a little miniature version. It's like paper cut manila folding, it's like something the Sylvanian families would use <laughs> sort of like miniature um, don't you just love uh, stock photography, it's like what's this all about, she's like looking really pensive at a bunch of files it's like who would do that? Uh, he looks happy to have a bunch of files. I'll get there in the end. I'm, what, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just scanning the photographs. I'm just seeing, you know, what could I possibly use to do this. Uh, The only trouble with that one is I can't see the paper at the front and it looks like it's like 3D computer generated. It's just it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work at all. Ooh. See that one if if the paper was on the outside. Maybe that could work. It's not. Another trick is as as well with um, with free pick is click on an image what you think might be suitable and it will show you related images underneath which might be tagged differently. So hmm. I'm just thinking. That's on lined paper. I'm not sure if I wanted lined paper. What he showed me was on lined paper. Look. Um, let's get this small. Let's put it to the side. Oh, yeah. Right. I'm thinking now could I use this? Uh, this top secret stamp and place it on top of this envelope and have it, oh, choose it. if you want a typewriter font the typewriter is not going to be typewritered, if that's even a word on a spiral bound punched page, that's the only thing I mean of course I could knock those out with um, the clone tool or something so it could work. That could work. Yeah. Right, so I'm going to keep that open. I'll just click that from there as well. Look underneath. What else is it giving me? This one as well. There's also that one. It's not going to work as well. No. No. Right, so now I've got this image. Um, could use that top secret there. That's no, that's computer graphics. Not going to do that. Will do. Mm, I think we 
this will do actually. So I'm going to these. Download this. Download that. Download them all, baby. There we go. Uh, right. I'm just using the uh, Apple Magic Mouse so that's I can scroll. Oh, crap. I'm just having a drink of juice on the tablet. So now he's my uh, Wacom tablet. <laughs> Wake on, whack on, I don't know. What am I up to? Anyway, 16 minutes of me blabbering. Uh, so it wants um, a CD a thumbnail doing. I was trying to think what's the best size for a thumbnail. I might do it. Um, so I go into Felt Shop and I'm going to make it. I think 1080 times 1080, that's good for, let's say wants it for social media sharing. And um, I'll leave that 72 because it's, it's just for social media. And of course, I'm thinking now, you know, there's another, another pro tip as a designer to future proof stuff. He's saying he wants a thumbnail for sh social sharing only. And I'd be tempted just now, not on this thinking, to put 1080 times 1080, uh, resolution of uh, 72 dpi, and um, then, you know, giving the file. What I found before in the past from clients and stuff, I've done other stuff, they ask me to do something for web, and then one day they'll come along and say, oh, that thing you did for web, can you do me a print version, you know, a poster of it? And I'll say yes, and I'll spend ages doing this web version. And it's the wrong resolution for, for print work, and you have to blow it up and it's really low resolution. Then you have to explain to the client that you didn't set it up, that it needs to be, be doing from scratch so it won't be the same, blah blah blah. And I've always found actually that, you know, future proofing stuff is the way to go. So, what I mean by that is I'll design it at a print resolution uh, and then just scale it down. A lot easier to scale something down than scale something up in the future. So, it's occurred to me now. Uh, I was going to do it as a, a thumbnail, so it's not something I do often just to do a thumbnail. It's just occurred to me. So what I'll do this, so what I'll do is, I'll stick this at 300 dpi, which is a print resolution. Instead of pixels, I'll choose centimeters. Uh, I mean, the standard CD is what, like 12 times 12 or something? I'll stick it, but there's bleed included as well. So I'll put it at... Um, I'll put it at 13 times 13 centimeters, 300 dpi. I'll keep it in RGB uh, color mode because it's a lot uh, better for designing. Uh, and then if it ever goes, and obviously RGB for print for web. And then if I ever need to, to you know, to do a version for print, I can always save it in, in CMYK afterwards. So I'll do that. Right. I'll just go to. Um, I still haven't set my Photoshop properly up yet after doing this new profile. I'll tell you someone's doing my head in already. The background's way too light. Where's that uh, setting? Where is it? Interface. Yeah, I want to. Yeah. Tell you what, so you can see what I'm doing easy as well. I'll, I'll actually make the uh, panel options, the thumbnails bigger. So you can see if you watch on YouTube or whatever. There you go. Um, Let's save this then. So save as. Oh, I don't want to. Always new these pop ups because I've just you know, watched my very first video. I've just I've set, set up a new profile in my uh, my Mac just for really making these videos. So um, let me see. Um, 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 um. Where am I going? Oh yeah, my card. Um. I think I'll stick everything in new. So I'll just call this at work. Right, I just like rulers in as well, that's one of those things. I just need the rulers. Then in new I'll set I'll set up a file. Um set the thing in that uh, I haven't got any resources though. Set up a, a file called resources. Go into downloads. Let me. Uh, I don't need those. Um, 
So I'll just expand those. Stick them there. Send those to the trash. See so here in the UK, move to bin, not move to trash. Been using trash so many years on a Mac, it's like I wish they would have left it as trash because that move to bin just sounds crap. And it's like I think I even call my own rubbish garbage sometimes, it's like <laughs> Americanisms. Right, I just want to move this uh, corner in so I can uh, let's get it right. Okay. Right. So we can download things um, from there. Take it into Photoshop. See, that's another thing. I've got things going to tabs now. I don't like. I don't really like it going to tabs except for in Illustrator. So I anyway, so just drag that, and then uh, that's wrong view. Where's that see? That's there. Let's get rid of that. Go into the next one. Not sure this new setup. If I double click it, will it open up in preview or Photoshop? Yes, it's still doing preview. Right, second. Open with Photoshop. Oh, why is that? Anyway, why is that option where it says it? When it oh, I know. Information. Uh, name and extension. No. That's it. Open with Photoshop. Uh, use this application to open all documents like this one. Change all. Are you sure? Yes. There we go. Now I've got to select all, copy, close it, paste it. Oh no, paste it wrong one. Paste it. Oh, yes, I've got that open in the tab here. Select all, copy, all right, paste. So, what I'm going to do is, I don't need to let, I can see what layers are, so I don't really need to rename them and waste time. I always convert to smart objects straight away, so no matter how small or how big um, these are, they will keep their uh, perfect clarity. Um, so, I was going to save that for now. I was thinking that top secret thing. Oh, there's no, um, I thought there'd be a vector version. No worries. Alright, first thing I'm going to do, I want that on top. I want a version of this. So, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm just going to duplicate this layer, whatever, turn that off, transform it, zoom out. And I'll try to work out how big I want this um, top secret thing. Um, a bit bigger than what I want it, just so I can shrink it down. And I'll just put that there, like that. So I want this top secret thing to be overlaid on any colour background. So what I think I'll do is, um, I'll just copy that. I will stick it in um, an alpha channel. Deselect. And that's a bit, a bit too grey for me. I'll go to image adjustments. Uh, I think I'll choose levels. What I want to do here is um, I want want to make that's it that a lot more black. Uh, I'll just experiment always. No, that's about right like that. Press OK. Uh, then there's, there's a little thing here. It's not like select all. It's making a selection from it. Um, then I'm going to go into a new layer, and then I'm going to I think I need to inverse the selection, inverse it. So that I forgot to select the colour red that I want. So that I'll change to a different red. Um, let me choose a. See, where are my colours gone? In fact, no, wait. RGB. That's it. I just want a, like a really bright red, like that. Right, is that a new layer? Yeah. Is it? Yep, yeah, new. So anyway, I'm just going to fill this selection with the foreground colour, which is red. Deselect. Ah. I didn't realise that um, it wasn't true black and white. Let's go back into that. I thought this was white in the background, but it's obviously not. Let me go into um, levels again. Let's see if I can get this white knocked off. No. Yeah, so I need to put this right down there. 
I do. I think I'm just going to press that selection again, um, just to inverse it, new layer. Uh, what are we doing? Yeah, fill with uh, foreground, foreground color. Right, so then I've got my uh, file, so now if you look, it just appears on top. So what I want to do is, I just want that top secret part, I'm just going to select that, copy paste, I don't want that anymore. If I need it again, I can just, uh, I don't think I will, go into, back into the alpha channel. So that's my stamp anyway. The uh, next thing I want to do is, I want to take a look at this and see where I can position it, so it's going to look good as part of a CD cover. Now, I need to abide by the uh, license of this, that I need to adapt it in order to use it. So what I want to do is, I'm only going to use a portion of the image, and then maybe, yeah, it's got a hand there. The thing is, I know what is wanting as something, a prominent part of the image is his photograph, so I need room for that. So I want say that to be the no good thing is that I need to knock these circles out so if I hide that bit behind there I don't need to knock them out as much if I rotate this like that is that looking better or oh, this way and I wanting to uh, substantially change it anyway and it's uh let's have a look I'm trying to frame it so it looks cool let me see man I think that to there looks all right. You know, thinking on, could have done with that red matching this red here. Oh, it just occurred to me. Um, I get an eyedropper. Let me eyedrop this. See, that's a bit dark though. So let's make it lighter. It's the same type of red. Yeah, that'll do. So I do need to go back to this. I'm just going to um, do that again, I'm just going to delete that, new file, I just want to drag that to the top, that's the, that's the way I roll, um, select, inverse it, fill, foreground colour, deselect, see that's a lot better, now it's like a, it's not so bright, and it won't even, if it goes to print it won't even print that bright anyway, so um, copy paste, stick that there, right there. This new layer, I want to make um, a smart object out of that as well. So, I was going to demonstration. If you never, if you never used smart smart objects before, now when this is smart object, you know to buy this little symbol here. I can make this really, really small like that. Look, press OK, and now, oh crap! I'm going to put a freaking uh, movement lock on that. That way now, I can't do it. <laughs> right. Um, so now if I zoom in on this, right, look how pixelated it is. Now, if that wasn't a smart object, right, when I tr try and resize that up big again, it would be still ridiculously pixelated. But because it's a smart object, look, it keeps everything crisp. So I can manipulate it as much as I want, and bob your uncle, right there. So, top secret. Uh, I know that top secret stamps, right, they're always like, because it's a stamp, they're never lined up perfectly. So, I'm thinking maybe, uh, it doesn't want this to be a prominent, you know, part of a CD. I don't think. So I'm just going to stick that there. I want these, um, these grey lines gone. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's see if this works. I'm going to zoom in. Oh, before I actually want to swatch out of that. Oh, it's auto swatches. It's auto swatched it. Anyway, uh, I'll get the colour of that uh, paper as well. Okay. I was going to get this um, oh, the hexagonal lasso. Go down here, and so it's not like totally straight. It's really obvious that I've amended stuff and what have you. I'm just going to make it zaggedy. What's going on there? It's like. It's already been manipulated. Why is that like a little um, little triangle there? And there, that's weird. Anyway, let me uh, let's go slowly. 
um, make my, my way around this form. Uh, I'm just going to do that. I've got no other settings on this. It's, I've got no feather on the uh, selection or anything like that. You know what that is. Nope. I want to taper that off slightly and go there. Uh, right. Then. So what I want to do with this? Is that, is that a new letter? I can't remember. I'm not done. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to fill that with that new grey first. Oh, no, no, I'm not. First, I'm going to. Um, wait a second, I'm thinking the best way to do this. No. Best way to do this go into there and I'm going to make a mask. I'm going to turn that for a second. I'm going to make a mask. Right. And then, now I've got this mask, I'm going to go to Image, Adjust, and Invert. This is going to invert the mask, so instead of me overlaying something grey on that, uh, what I'm going to do is create another layer underneath. And um, what am I doing? Yeah, paint bucket. I'm going to fill that in grey. Right, that looks pretty good as is. But here's what I can do now. Now that I've done that, because if you zoom in. You can see here where well, there's a slight shadow there look and it's, ma it's making it another triangle. And see what happens is I'm going to select this, in fact I'm going to duplicate this first just in case I cock it up. Right, get this, I'm going to image, no, no. I'm going to go to filter, blur, and then going to go to, you know, I've always called this my entire life Gushen Blur. I have no idea how we actually pronounce it. Is it Gushen Blur? Is it Gaussian Blur? I don't really care, it blurs it. Anyway, so I'm going to, so if you look here, if I put it like up, 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 look, you see how this is like blurring, look, like that. That's too much. So what I'm thinking is, maybe I can put a sort of, uh, I'm thinking more around the thumb. Let's see what looks best. 1.7, is that too much? Not too much, yeah. 1. Not quite far, is it? Point seven. Okay, no point seven. Right, and this this is concerning me at the moment. So we know that black um, knocks it out. So what I want to do, as I is, I want to actually get a paintbrush. Oh, paintbrush are down here. We'll see how big that is. Come on, I don't know. Right, then, that's too big. Let me just turn this down a second. Oh yeah, it's not thirty. That's why it's. On 30. Oh, up here. So, things are different. Oh, I don't know. I'm on my, my new workspace. Hard mysterious. Yeah, that's good. Let's put the opacity down to something like 60 or something. I'm going to slowly, if you see what I'm doing here. So, now I'm actually I'm just painting this away. I'll get that little triangle thing while I'm at it, actually. There we go, man. I'm just going to. You know, while I'm doing that bit, oh, what am I doing? Let me just go now, put the opacity down. I want to make the brush slightly bigger. There we go. And I'm just going to feather this in slightly, going up. I think the shadow's going away near the top, so. That shadow's on my computer screen. No, oh, no, it's absolutely on there. What is it? I don't know. Right, I think, I think then, that's where we look, yeah. And because of the way that did the image, the, uh, the holes are gone on the other side. You know something I haven't done for ages? Saved it. <laughs> Command S, save, booyah. Right, okay. So, that's done. So now we know the edge of the paper is there, at a right angle, going up that way. Let me just see. Um, I was going to select that. Let me just see what happens if I put auto to on. Sometimes it really cocks it up, sometimes it makes it better. Is that any better? Hold up, let me. Actually, it has made it better here. Yeah. Let's go to image, auto contrast. I don't think it's done anything really. Image auto color. You see here, I've got auto color in American spelling color. Oh, wow, but on the Mac OS, Mac OS, I've changed the trash to bin. <laughs> so Adobe haven't uh, haven't realised yet and changed their spellings. So you know what? That thumb's looking awfully 
pink all of a sudden. What did I do last time? Um, yeah, that auto colour really cocked it up. Right, I'll leave it like that. So I'll leave me. Oh no, wait a minute. Layer visibility, auto colour. I want that off. Auto contrast, auto colour. Right, I think that's right. So, I don't need that top secret box thing anymore. I'm going to save this. What do you want? Typewriter font. So, fonts. Um, what's the damn thing called? Scott Wainwright, something. Something, something. Uh, where did this. Um, oh, I don't know. What's it called? Indoor Fireworks Demos. Scott Wainwright. I don't know. Um, Oh, yeah, that I got. Tell you what. Let's get Scott Wayne right from there. Um, let's make that bigger for a second. What's going on? Save it. Um, fonts. Have I got a typewriter. American typewriter. Ah, oh, here we go. Uh, I do know what it's like. Aha! There we go. Perfect. Scott William Knight. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create them all upright and, and rotate them all together, sort of thing. Uh, Scott William Wright. That's frigging CD card. Something. Fireworks or something. What? You hear that in the background, it's why Springer Spaniel Dog is like you know, running through the fields today and he's like come out of the fields like sneezing to death and he's got some kind of piece of corn or something stuck up his nose. And he's like <coughs> uh, in, what's it called? Indoor fireworks demos. <coughs> Now the dog's um, coughing. He's going for a drink. And uh, fireworks. Now some demos. That hasn't got a square bracket in this font. Oh, that bracket. Oh, great. So now I've chosen a font that's got no frigging. Oh, what the heck? Please stop doing that. Rotation, I mean the movement lock. Uh, indoor fireworks. So it's fun. Is it joking? Is it seriously got no frigging brackets in? Great. This is why the series is called Raw and Uncut. Right. Why would a font have no brackets in? Well, can you get brackets in the title? Surely, surely you can. Let's, let me just duplicate this a second. Um, what was that other one? Ah, so. That was only a hunch actually to use the bold one. Why has the bold one got brackets but not the new one? Really weird. Or is it just a system flaw? So look. Um, so why are they, why are they going in now? Weird. Anyway, now they're working. Now, now I'm thinking actually, is that uh, is that bolder font actually better? Maybe. So we'll look. So we've got Scott Wayne right there. Uh, oh, that. Well, it's like a mix as well, that's pretty cool. Mm. Actually, I don't, I don't think I like mix. Bold. <laughs> Dog's all choking. Right. I think that if you want the desire of a, uh, of a typewriter, the, the typewriter um, letters would be the same size, actually. Let's see what size that is. That's uh, K. 
allow it to let me just stick that to uh, to 18 to make it simple and then I'll go to this one and stick that to 18 I think that word demos will look better underneath uh, ooh, there's some extra spaces there just knock those out so I can um, decentralize it Right, I think that's working better. Let's we'll get rid of that. Um, although, no, because that's going to knock things down too low. No, I'll leave it like that. Right then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that there. I was like a to have a center mark. I'm just going to put a transform to that just so we can find the center, snap it, press that, and we'll put that lock back, back on there so I, can, so I can see that line. Right then. Let's go back. Put Scott way right. Which way around did you want it? Just, uh, oh, he does want his name bigger though. Hmm, I'll just get this photograph then he wants. And just um, put it there. Um, let's make it into a smart object. Let moi see. Hmm. Right. I'm just looking here now. And. It's like I'm thinking, should all the text be, um, should I put Scott Wainwright at the bottom, on top of the envelope? Because it's very limited space, unless I uh, chop the bottom of the uh, photograph off. All I'm thinking is maybe if Scott Wainwright was there, I could actually make that better. I could even actually match up the blue. Let's have a look, see how that works. So let me um let me get that blue. I can tell already it's a bit too dark, so it's gonna make a no it's like black, it's not even blue, wait a minute. That's spot sample. Oh. Let's put on a 11 by 11 average. Let's go. Why is it the lightest? Let's have a look. Hmm. It's showing up as very. It is a blue. It's really. Is it? It looks slightly blue to me, but actually, no, it's not. It's on the red. Back up there. See, that looks more like it. I don't care what that colour says. I'm just going to stick it like. That. I'm going to add that. I'm going to double click that. I think. I'm going to. I've just chosen. Right. So what I'm going to do is. I'm actually just going to duplicate that there. And then just turn that one off. Because I want to make this bigger. I'll tell you what as well. I'm saying that. If that's supposed to be typed on there. Though, I don't know. Um, indoor fireworks, it's got way right. Um, let's go put these into a separate file and I'm going to duplicate that and keep that one as a backup because I'll rotate these around and see what it looks like. So now I also want to match the rotation to the top of that page. Although, wait a minute. 
I'm not doing the entire thing. No, I'm just like these both. Well, they're both going out. Oh no, that's why. Oops, I'll just delete that. No, oh, in the group, I need this photograph. Yeah, there we go. Right. Is that the main one? Yeah. So I'm going to duplicate that. I'll go back in there. Um, I'm going to take that out of the group a second. Then I'll select that group. There we go. I seem to rotate it around. I just notice this edge is like on a, on the perspective. But I'll address that in a second. So I'm just wanting to to know if it works like it should. Ah, you know what? I've got a brilliant idea. Screw that. Uh, that history. I'm going to take that top secret. There. See, I'm going to actually, actually uh, name that the actual thing. That's my computer with mental because I'm recording this at the same time there on my hard drive. It's like really warm in here. Because uh, I've shut the door because all my kids and wife are asleep upstairs. So I have shut the door and now I'm scorching out and now my computer is overheating. I could put. Oops, what the heck? What am I doing? There we go. I could. What? I haven't got a lock on that. Why is that not selecting? Is that right file? Yeah. So why can't I move it? No. Oh. Must be selecting a transparent bit. Yeah. So I can put the top secret actually on the. Let's make it bigger. This is why it's really. You know what? I should have, I should have made it bigger from the start. But actually, I think I got it slightly bigger than the, what I used it. So maybe let's make that. So I want it off, maybe, because it, so it's it's showing that uh, it's not actually the name of the title. It's part of, it's a design element, because I'm thinking if I went and stuck it there, like this big, the first thing people see is top secret. I'm, I'm thinking that the band, the artist, or the the title is actually called top secret. And that's not what I want. Um, so, if I'm using this, it's got to be part of some kind of secondary uh, thing going off screen. So you can't really, you need to really look at it. So it's less obvious. Let's see. No, it's not, it's not looking good like that. Not looking good like that either. It cause a real problem this. I think it's like he wants top secret there, but and there's only three pieces of information on the on it. So I need to make this top secret less prominent than the title of the album and the artist. Actually, I think the way to go is actually to make this bigger. Bizarrely. Put that in line. Let's see. So if I do that, I put this top secret into its own little folder, and I'm going to reduce the opacity of it. There we go. Let's try that. So then when I go back up to this, um, let's 
Right, so I've got Scott Wayne right there. Let's see what I can do. I know for a fact that that Scott Wayne right cannot go underneath the photograph. It has to go above. You know, where's that with Scott Wayne right? What's smaller? So that should be really. F I'll line that up. So I was thinking, you know, best way to frame that. You know what? Let's we'll try that then. It's going to get rid of that group. And instead, duplicate this group just in case I cock this up. I don't need to reline things. So let's transform this. I think. Now that is looking something like that is it's making more sense. Yeah. And if that if his photograph is dipped behind the folder thing. Yeah. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to duplicate this layer set again. And I'm going to. In fact, before I do that, right then, I'll take all that off. I'm going to go back to the original layer set. This photograph has got, again, so it's a smart object, so I can just resize it. At my leisure, without losing any clarity. If I'm satisfied, you know what? I'm going. To... Normally, what I do is, if it's something's like, um, say this, if something is like, uh, typewriter text, I'd you know, transform it and put a slight angle to show that uh, it is indeed. Um, you know, give it more effect. But I think in this particular case, I'm going to need to warp it anyway. But I might slightly do it. Yeah. So I'll undo that. Yeah. I think I'll do that. I'm gonna leave that that set as it is, just so I can duplicate it just in case you need to go back to it, like I have done a couple of times. First thing I do, I'm just gonna rotate this ever so slightly one way. I'm gonna take this and rotate it ever so slightly the other way, and then just make sure it's central. Right then. That's what I'm going to do. So I'll take this layer set, duplicate it again. And then I'm going to go and actually merge this group. So now this text and everything is image. It's now not edit editable. That's why I've dupl duplicated it. I'm just going to duplicate this layer just in case I need to go back to this one. What I'm going to do is transform it. I'm going to rotate it so the first thing I'm going to do is to make sure this uh, top edge lines up. Find out roughly where I want it on the page, which is round about there. And then I'm going to just do this. Right, if you notice this this edge here uh, is going towards this edge because it's like a slight perspective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the E button on the Mac, um, and then whilst holding down E, I can then independently manipulate this handle. So I'm going to make this edge sort of match up-ish. I mean, there is like some perspective going to the image, so if I match it up perfectly, it's actually going to throw the perspective off. Really, I want it a bit more, so it's not that way, but aligned, and then slightly a bit further that way. And let's see, I'm happy with that. I think so. And this one, I'm um, going to press it, then press E, and uh, I might just slightly that way, slightly up. 
think so. So I'm just going to do that. Then I'm going to put um, a layer mask on it. No, not. I'm not. I'm it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce transparency. Reduce the transparency. So I'm going to take that uh, mask layer guide off. I'm going to take for this selection of matrix favorite off the bat. I'm going to favorite on 0 0.3 pixels because it's a straight edge anyway. And then I'm going to do that. Take that there, right? I'm following the edge of this envelope. In fact, there's no need to actually have it transparent over. I should just turn it off the layer. I couldn't think of it. Anyway. Live and learn. So there's my mask. So what I could have done is actually just turn that off, it doesn't really matter. Uh, then I'm going to put a mask over it. And then I'm just going to go to um, image adjust invert. So I'm going to take that uh, link symbol off and it's going to nudge it up slightly because it's a bit misaligned. You can see there actually. Made a tiny bit of a mistake there, but not to worry. I'm going to take that from there again, and I'm just going to redo that one to about there. And then I'm just going to go to um, fill with white. You can see that's corrected that little issue. So I think all going well. Let's save it again. All going well. I actually, I think that's it's done its job. It's um, it's suiting suited its purpose. Yeah. Except, I think let's link that back up again. I'm just going to duplicate this layer. And then this, I'm just going to drag it into the trash in order that I can press apply. Then I've got the image. And then I think this text is slightly too big, you know. Ideally, what I should really do is go back and do it all again. Amend the text before doing this, but I think it can be shrunk without too much uh, image quality loss. I'm just going to cut it, paste it back on. And then I'm just going to reduce the size. I don't actually think it needs to be that big. I was obsessed before with lining up the photograph to Scott Wainwright. In fact, no real need to do that. I think this is going to give it a lot more breathing space. It's going to look better. I know by doing this, it's actually throwing the, the alignment slightly up as well, but nothing too major. Let's have a look. I'll do a fireworks demo of Scott Wainwright. That top secret, there's something still not. And uh, reduce the transparency. Another good thing I could do is put a layer mask on it and like put a stippled mask effect on it, as though like some parts are like more in show than other parts. But uh, I don't think there's a need to do that. I think the secret, as it were, lies in the positioning. No, that's, that's way too much in. I think it's because I'm working with transparent things. If, if I'm trying to drag it in the transparent section, that's why it does that. I need to actually get a pixel. Um, you see there? Totally in view again, but I think it's... Needs to look like it's just some kind of second move that little lock on there to show that it's a stamp as well. Maybe if it's smaller. Mm -hmm. 
You know what? Why the heck have I got these smart guides on? Not smart guides, I mean, um. Yeah, smart guys, won't you? I'm too mad at it. Let's see. And information. Let's go to this new setup. Keep showing stuff. Show. How do you get that information box off? You know, it's like me, so many years since that information thing's come on, I forgot how to take it off. You know, that information, that coordinates, like, Kurt showing it. Um, I know it's some kind of really simple setting that I never you I never normally have to turn it off. I mean, what's it's normally under information thing there. Oh, that's bugging me now. I know the I know the info panels there. No, I naturally don't really have that in the. Um, but why is it showing information as I'm doing it? View. Right, let's turn the extras totally off. No, I'm still doing it. I don't know. I've been using Photoshop for so many years with my old profile. I forgot how to do it, doesn't matter. Anyway, march forward. Oh, crap. I have been going wrong all of a sudden. Right then. Ooh, that looks better. Secret. Maybe if I just dip that though. You know, there's something just really bugging me about this top secret thing. Just the way it was positioned on page. You know what? I think finally that's it's looking it's looking sort of balanced for the first time. What I'm thinking about that stippled effects thing was. Let me just duplicate this a second. I'll put it onto full top secretliness, if that's even a word. Um, let's go to brush. Uh, where are those um, creaking really cool? I've got some brushes on my system box to load. But I haven't got one on this one. Anyway, I'm thinking. Freaking opacity on my phone. So anyway, I'm thinking, what happens if like it is on full opacity? But I get something like this and just in a layer mask do that with it, maybe. So the bottom part I'll leave alone a lot more than top part. Um, in what size is that one? Let's make it a bit smaller. So the granules are. Smaller. I'm thinking, what if I do that? So it's like the stamp's like more worn, like it's a really old stamp that's been stamped on the top of it, sort of thing. Yeah. But then once I've done that, go back onto the uh, and then mess around with transparency. That's all right. You know, I think I've finally hit the nail on the head. I think that looks a lot better. I think I'm a lot more satisfied with that, yeah. Brilliant. Well, Mr. Kelso, you've cracked it. Well, I'm not one to boast. Is that okay? Talking to myself at 2 o'clock in the morning. Right. <laughs> uh. I'm going to do well, that's it. Yeah, finally, I'm just looking now. I want to put some kind of shadow on. I don't need that on this. So, to get this layer mask, I'm going to channels. I'm going to no, no, oh heck, I'm going to get this. I'm going to make a selection out of it. I'm going to go, um, no, no, I've got something I need to do first. What I'm going to do is new layer. I am going to get black, fill it. What the heck is that black? That blue color. Get black, fill it. Go right to the top. Bam. Okay. 
Then I'm going to get some kind of gradient type thing. Uh, I wanna. Where my gradients gone? Everything's moved around. No, I press gradient. No, it's there. It's okay. Is that black to transparent? I want to. You see, where are all my. Ugh, normally I come on here and then a little bit at the top. There we go. There it is. Okay. Oops. I just need to put that on a layer mask. Right then. I need that reversing. I need to go here. I need to switch places with that, with that, I think. Oh no, wait a minute. Oh crap. What the heck have I done? Wait a minute, double click. I want that. And then I need to replace that with that. So I can go in the middle. Yeah, that's what I need to do. So from this point on, I'm wanting to create a shadow from here to about there. What the heck going on? Why is it not doing that anymore? Delete. I think it's because I've done it too many times. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know it did that. When you use transparent, that you can't keep doing it, it actually adds to it, that's why. What the? No. Oh, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Okay, I'll start again. New layer. Oh, no, I didn't want that. History. Delete layer. I don't want to delete that. Right then. Here we go, delete layer. <laughs> delete, okay. I'm going to turn the opacity down on this. So I need to get it right first time. Okay. Layer mask. I want to take what, I want the shadow to like radiate up from this. So I'm going to the middle. I go from there to there. No. Okay. I'm going to go from there to there. No. I know what I need to do. This one needs to come. I need to do that, and I want that to go like that. Okay, hang on a second. I want that to go from there. Oh, it's kind of the total opposite way I wanted it. I've done that totally wrong. No, so that's going to. In my mind, that should do it. Why is it not doing it? Mm. See, that's having a total opposite effect like I thought it would. Oh, I don't know what's going on. It's because that bit's showing us to well, keep it as it was. It's not working out the way I thought it would. I'll we'll keep that. Even now it's gone. Really weird. I don't understand what's what's going on. Oh, that's why that thing's right down there. It shouldn't be. I need that back at the centre. I want that to start there, go there. Right, that's having my desired effect. In fact, I think that's it. Finally. Okay, I'm just going to duplicate this. Okay, deleted it by accident. I'm just going to duplicate this. I am going to trash that. Press apply, there we go. I'm gonna go back into my channels. No, I'm not. I'm gonna go down here. I want this layer mask that I use for the thumb. Um, I then wanna make a selection out of that layer mask. I'm gonna go back up and then I'm gonna select this and I'm going to create a layer mask on that. I'm gonna go to image, adjust, invert. No, no. Image, adjust. Oh, I'm getting tired. Finally. And then I'm going to make put that into another folder because I want to create a secondary layer mask. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer mask. I'm going to go to Image, Adjust, Invert to black it all out. And then I'm going to get a brush, a massive brush. Not that one, I want a, just a normal freaking one. I want it quite big. 
point or something like 150 pixels. Let's go see what it looks like. Um, no, you're way bigger than that. What am I thinking? I'm thinking more like, no, not a thousand body. Uh, I'm just thinking 500, yeah, that'll do. No, actually, I need bigger than that. I'm going to put it to about 900 and I'm going to knock the opacity down to about 4%. Right, and then, I'm, then I can start like painting in. No, I need a better. What the heck's going on here? Computer slow back right down. No, I have no need actually to have Adobe Illustrator running in the background. Taking up all my memory. In fact, I don't actually need Google Chrome running. Let's quit that. I don't even need text edit running. I'm just going to relaunch the Finder. Maybe a file will start spinning like crazy. Right. So now if you can see what I'm doing is I'm just slightly painting on a shadow. All in the areas that I want because this top area here is like it goes all jaggedy and goes it veers off and this is a bit weird near the thumb although I might do a bit near the thumb oh, those last two ones are a bit weird there we go uh, going to do that I think that might be it I think so this one, or maybe undo that, I want the opacity down to about 4%, and then I want to do one there. And then I want to get that. I'm going to knock that opacity down, so it's 77. I'm just going to knock that down just to create a tiny bit, a little bit of finesse. I think that's looking something like. Yeah, the only thing that's uh, bothering me at the moment, I'm going to save this, is. I was going to redo. Let's put a layer mask on this photograph. And right down at the bottom. That bit that I redid, I don't know. There's a bit of white coming up there. What about the old one? Oh, that's the one with the layer mask on. That was going to no need to separate that from the text, is there? I'm just going to duplicate that again. So I'm going to this layer mask. I need to add a bit more black um, to this thing. I think I can do it just by just by eye. Let's put that about sixty percent. Um, I'm just thinking black, black more than that. Too white. Alright, so I'm just working out what. Well. So I've got my white on, and now I'm just going to slightly. I'm not sure why that's why. Just let it black. One second. No, but, oh, that's why. Undo that a second. One second. Just disable. No, oh, that's why it's doing it. Name. 
disable. Disable. It's because that's misaligned. Something weird going on. Ah, uh, yeah, that's why. I don't know. So that is black. That's still black. Let's go. In the so I'm just a perfectionist. <laughs> Uh, select modify, it's going to feather that by 0 0.4 0 0.4 I'm just going to fill with black I haven't done this the wrong way around Oh, something is really confusing me here. I just don't understand. I don't always get it right. Where's that bit of blue coming from? See here, it's like a little stripe of blue. I've got a layer mask. I thought. You know, it's not put on the photograph, is it? Ah. See, again, I re reiterate, this is why this is called Andrew Kelso, uh, raw and uncut. I thought this little blue here, this tiny bit of blue, was caused by the layer mask not going up far enough. So I tried to amend it in black and white, it confused me. And I've just realised now it's not because of the layer mask, that bit of blue, that's the base of the photograph. The actual photograph stops there, and that's what's confusing me. Right, so what I need to do is instead... So I've unlink, unlinked the layer mask. Do I bring that down slightly to look? Or is it that? Ah, oh, it's not. No. The real culprit is this. It's the layer mask for this layer 9 copy, this shadow. That's what's causing it. Not the photograph. But I don't know why, because I took that layer mask directly from the other thing. But I know how to correct this. I'm just going to blur the layer mask. Filter, blur, gushion, or however you say it, blur. Stick it onto something like 3.5. Now that's made the rest of it blurred. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> um, I know. When I go in here, I think I will choose the brush. I'm going to choose a smaller brush, say 46. I'll pass it down to about 15%. Let's go onto this. I'm also going to duplicate this just in case I cock it up like I always seem to do. So, white is showing, so black is hiding. So I need to let's bring it picking us. That's what it seems to uh, to seem to work in. Um, I just need to choose a smaller brush. That's all. I need to go up to about forty-nine. What a faff! 
Yeah, really, I should have started the mask process off all again. The reason why I've gone down this rabbit hole is that I thought it was a really simple task just to amend this tiny bit of blue. And it seems to have turned into a friggin' nightmare. I've even got like part of the paper there now black. However, that black now looks like it's shadow of this fold in the paper. It's not too, it actually bizarrely works. I think I'll leave it like that. I think <laughs> this is actually going to be seen like this size on social media. So that bit's not going to be seen. I think that's fine as it is. I'll just somewhere along the line just duplicate that text. I think oh, yeah, I had that text. Uh, hmm, I need to knock that text off. Wait a second. Gonna just like this, and then I've already got a version of it there, so I think I'll just delete this off. Right then, just gonna save that. You know, something I always like to do as well is um, get all my layers. I have to stick them to a master folder called Artwork, just in case I have to get another layer uh, file in the future to drag it in. It makes it look a lot easier. So, I think all going well. That's a pretty good result. Don't know why it's uh, hanging up on ninety nine percent. Dear me, two twenty four. After this, I'm saving it for um, social media. So I'm just gonna, you know, you can export it. You can even go to, you know, save for leg le legacy and ultra uh, optimize optimize it that kind of thing. But uh, no real need. I think for this one, just a PNG. I mean, sorry, a JPEG will suffice. I'm sort of going to a card. Uh, Scott, so yeah, that's gonna print that new file. So I save it to JPEG. It's just for social media. I'll stick it to for now. Wait, it, it, I mean, here's a trick. Um, you could put it as a high setting, and it's a you know, it's just shy of a quarter of a megabyte, which is still quite large. Um, but I'll put it on eight for now. So, what's that? 248k. Let's hide Photoshop. It's going to relaunch Chrome. Um, Tiny PNG. Yeah, it's got some tiny PNG. Get your file and drag it into there. It's a free service. You can get a Photoshop plugin for it here. It costs like 80 bucks a year or something, but there's no point. You can easily do this. So, anyway, so now this is giving me the exact same quality file at minus 41% size. So now it's uh, 145k. So I'm just going to download that. That'll download into the file. I mean, let me just call this uh, artwork one so I can show you and stick that in as artwork. So that's the original one. Let's say 250k. This is the tiny PNG version 141k. So look. No difference, and it's 40% less file size, so it's a really brilliant service. And like I said, you can get the Photoshop plugin version for it. But anyway, so I think that's a good result. I think I'll, uh, I'll email that to him tonight when it's all done. Hopefully, he'll say. Hopefully, Andy. Yeah, good job. I love that. Uh, I love one of your finest files. I'll say, boom, yeah. There it is. You've already got it. Project on. I mean, uh, not all projects are as simple as that, but you know. Anyway, if you have any questions or whatever, uh, leave them below. I'm not going to promise I'll answer them, especially if you ask a question a year after I actually made the video. But uh, if you ask a question within you know, a week of me posting it, I may actually answer any uh, questions about it, that kind of thing. And. Um, Please subscribe if you don't already, and uh, I plan to you know continue as I'm designing stuff. 
show you me designing them. As you can see from this video, I will make mistakes. Things will confuse me along the way, especially when designing at 2 o'clock in the morning and I'm tired. <laughs> especially using this Photoshop setup where I've gone into a new profile and all my tools are in different positions, but uh, we'll get there in the end. So thanks a lot. Let me stop this video and I'm going to go to bed. Where are we? Okay, all right. Stop and save recording.